where are we? Obviously, we're in Maricosta High School right now, which is in Manhattan Beach, California, North America, on the planet Earth that we just saw. Planet Earth revolves around a star. The star is our sun, and our sun is 150 million kilometers away from us. Speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. I'll spare you the math. It takes about eight minutes for light from the sun to reach our eyes. So when you look at the sun, please don't look at the sun, you're seeing it as it was eight minutes ago. Everything you see is already history. So because the speed of light is constant, the distance between us and the sun is, can be known as eight light minutes. So as you go out further from the Earth, you got the outer planets, you got your Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and you're not gonna leave Pluto in there. I'm so used to it, I can't leave it out. Yeah. Pluto is about three billion kilometers away from us right now. And so light from Pluto takes about three hours to reach us. Pluto is also three light hours away. Light from the Pluto that you go out and you see now it's left it three hours ago. So here's our Earth. So when you go out at night and you look up, in LA you're not gonna see a whole lot because it's kind of bright, but if you're lucky enough, you go out to a dark sky area, what you will see is our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. And now we're on one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy. By the way, our galaxy is a spiral galaxy. That's why it's on all these arms. We're on the Orion arm, and we're about two-thirds of the way out from the core. So when you look out and you see the Milky Way, you're seeing the dense core, and you're seeing the spiral arms making the bands. From the other end of the Milky Way to us, the diameter of the Milky Way is about 25,000 light years. So light takes 25,000 years to make it from the stars on the other, way, other side of the Milky Way to us. And we're not alone here. So as you go out further, it turns out we're in this thing called a local group. So the local group has about 50 or so galaxies, most of them a little bit smaller than we are. The diameter of the local group is about 10 million light years. Light takes 10 million years to go from one end of the local group to reach our eyes. And of course, I'm not done yet because space is big. We're in this thing called a Virgo supercluster, our local group in which we're galaxy, Milky Way, spiral arm, Earth, right? So, Supercluster, we're in this thing called a Virgo supercluster. And the Virgo supercluster has about 100,000 galaxies in total. Virgo supercluster, I know now the numbers are all blurring together, right? The Virgo supercluster is 100 million light years across. And I'm sorry, one more. We are part of the structure called Lanakea. Lanakea is one half a billion light years across. Light from the other stuff on the other side of Lanakea takes half billion years to reach us. So that's a long time ago. And it turns out that the observable universe, I, I, I'm done, so the observable universe stops <laughs> at stuff like Lanakea. So you've got structure that looks like Lanakea, you've got voids, and you've got other things that are not named Lanakea, but they're other kind of Lanakea, like big structures. And the observable universe is about 13.7 billion years old. And when you are able to look with for example, the Hubble Space Telescope, this is a pretty iconic image, you're able to look out to about 13.2 billion years. So the galaxies that you're looking at here, most of these guys are galaxies, except for the really bright things with kind of the spiral pattern on there. Those are uh, nearby stars. Most of the galaxies that you can see there are about 13.2 to 13.3 billion years old. First stars and galaxies, astronomers think, formed about 13.5 billion years ago, so the math doesn't really add up. There's a gap. So we have not been able to see these very first stars and very first galaxies that have ever been formed. We call those things first light, it's kind of poetic. And we want to see those things because it'll tell us about the distribution of matter in the universe. It'll tell us how all this stuff came to form. And more importantly, it'll tell us how it all ends everything, the universe. Who cares? <laughs> Why does it matter? You know, we got a lot of problems in this world. First light, are you kidding me? In the 1950s, 
there's a sociologist named Abraham Maslow, and he described a hierarchy using a pyramid of human needs. And on the bottom of this pyramid, we have our physical needs, starting with we need air, water, and food, without which you don't last very long. Once you have those satisfied, you move on to safety, clothing, shelter. So those physical needs on the bottom of the pyramid, once you have those satisfied, you move on to emotional needs. Things like family, your community, sense of belonging, self-esteem. And at the very tip of the pyramid, he made a simple, very tip of the pyramid, self-actualization. Self-actualization is a lot of debate, as you can imagine, among sociologists about exactly what it is. But you know it. You know what it is. You can feel it. You can ask yourself, are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Are you a satisfied person? If you're not hungry, you're not thirsty, you have a roof of your head, you got a reasonable job, no, you're not. You're a human being. And this thing in the back of your head, this fizz, this drive, this curiosity in you, is this thing that drives the advancement of civilization, is why we make art, and is why we do science, and is why we need to look at first light. And the good news is, we're doing exactly that. We're bridging this gap between what Hubble can see, 13.2, maybe if you push it, 13.3 billion years, to where these very first stars and very first galaxies are, they're located in time, 13.5 billion years ago, and we're building a machine to do that. And this machine is called the James Webb Space Telescope, and it's pretty big. Uh, probably fill the stage if we brought it here, which would be a really bad idea. But uh, the mirrors, the gold things on the top, are six and a half meters across. So to give you some context, I'm just over one and a half meters, five foot five. I'm gonna say five foot five. And uh, JWST mirrors are four times my height. Underneath there is an even larger structure. It's called the sun shield. And its purpose is to shade those mirrors to make it really cold and really dark so it can look at these very first stars and very first galaxies, which are very far away and very dim. And that thing there, that five-layer structure, is about the size of a single tennis court. It's a space telescope. We have to put it in space. We need to get it off the Earth and away from all the atmosphere. And so, unfortunately, there's not a launch vehicle big enough to send up things the size of a single tennis court. And so we have to fold it up. And then once it gets into space, we have to then unfold it all together. And we get one shot to do this. Because we're sending it one and a half million kilometers away from the Earth to this place called L2. And that is four times further than we've ever sent a human being. So there's not going to be a repair mission, rescue mission. We have to get this right the first time, the only time. No pressure. <laughs> and so what... The thing that I really want to tell you about JWST is that it is people building it. It's people like me. I've been on this project since about 2012, and really this thing started in earnest in 2002. Uh, so my six years is a relative newbie uh, doing this thing. But uh, we are all kinds of people. We're scientists, we're engineers, we're technicians, we're planners, we're business people, we're teachers, we're communications folks who make all this PR happen. And uh, we are cleaning staff. We're building JWST in a high bay, in a clean room, where we control the amount of dirt and dust in there. And you can bet that we have very stringent cleaning requirements, and so our cleaning folks are a very important part of our team. And we come from all walks of life, and we have PhDs, we have high school diplomas. And if you're local to Manhattan Beach, we're building this thing two miles, I think, away from here uh, at the Northrop Grumman Space Park facility. And so in that high bay, I walk in, I see this thing, and let me tell you, I'm on top of that Maslow's pyramid. I feel it. And it's not just me. So for those of us who are lucky to work on this, we sometimes get to bring our friends and family into this little window we got on the high bay, and you can look down and look at JWST, and I see it in their faces. When they look down and when they see it, they connect to this thing that we're doing. And so where are we? 
It turns out that we're a civilization that builds first light machines. We are people that are willing to do this. JWST is a testament to our collective human achievement. And I'm pretty privileged to be working on this. I'm really excited about this whole thing, but what I really can't wait for is the discoveries that it will make. Thank you.